What's going on, y'all? You're back. I'm your host, Paco. I want to thank you if you're tuning in. Definitely appreciate it. Those of you that's in the chat room on ronpaulradio.com, just click on Listen Live and you can join us there. Any questions, concerns, feedback, definitely appreciate it. Or you can also go to ronpaultribune.com, click on the voice chat room, and you can check me out there as well. Real quickly, just want to say that Ron Paul Radio is listener supported. We need your help to stay on the air and fight the mainstream media blackout. Go to ronpaulradio.com and donate via the chip in on the right hand side of the page. Remember, every donation of $20 or more gets a free blimp courtesy of our sponsors at ronpaulblimps.com. Okay? So last hour we were playing some clips. If you guys missed it, uh, let's see, uh, Russia Today will Mitt Romney offer Rand Paul the vice presidency. You guys can check that out. A reality check, a new reality check out. Did Mitt Romney really secure the GOP nomination with the Texas win? Of course he didn't, but we know the media, what they're going to do. So that's Ben Swan, reality check just out from last night. We played that earlier. You guys can check that out. Also at the Washington Post, the morning plum. Obama, uh, Mitt Romney's operatives admit that the, his campaign ads are propaganda. They come out and admit it. Russia Today, TSA wants to double security fees. Over at InfoWars, a pastor sentenced to two years in prison for teaching that parents should spank their children. That's right. Two years in prison for that. Libertarian Review, Defense Department seeks legal authority to deploy reservists onto American streets. And also... At the telegram.com, Ron Paul supporters to protest a GOP meeting in Marlboro tonight. You guys can check those out if you missed it or go to the podcast uh, down at the bottom of ronpaulradio.com and you can check that out uh, in case you're just tuning in. Okay, so what's some, what's some new uh, headlines that we have here going on? Yes, so we're going to jump into this article. Somebody brought to my attention on uh, policymike.com. Ron Paul shamelessly ripped in LA, LA Times as stupid, okay? And uh, I want to pull up the LA Times piece and the Policy Mike piece here. You know, it's so amazing how they try to take shots at people that's fighting for our freedom. You know, they're the nicest guy. Ron Paul wouldn't hurt anybody. Uh, but, you know, the media is just full attack. OK, so while the Los Angeles Times has neglected neglected to cover the huge outpouring of support Californians have shown for Texas Congressman Ron Paul across the state, it has found it necessary to uh, de- de- denigrate Ron Paul in a recent childish article. It plays in places ranging from Chico, UCLA to Berkeley. Paul has drawn crowds ranging from a few thousand to an estimated 10,000 Californians coming out to hear Ron Paul speak. The L.A. Times has been virtually silent on this topic, yet when Lisa Mascaro and her editors came across a study on speaking styles in Congress, they decided it appropriate to use that information to smear Congressman Congressman Paul. Quote, what has become clear in the new research is that the soaring oratory that once filled the floors of the House and Senate with million-dollar diction and sophisticated syntax is making way for a more modest approach. The L.A. Times story reads, the story photo features Congressman Paul and his son, Rand Paul, highlighting that the later Paul especially speaks on an eighth grade level. Okay, let me be careful before I throw my microphone. (laughs) Ron Paul speaks on an eighth grade level. You guys hear this? Do you hear what what I'm reading you? The story photo features Congressman Paul and Rand Paul highlighting that the later Paul especially speaks on an eighth grade level. Paul regularly draws 5,000 people in audiences, rain or shine, to hear him speak in any state. The L.A. Times misses that story. They miss the story of his Republican supporters stepping up into leadership roles across the Republican Party. Exactly. Just like that, uh, that Washington Times uh, uh, article I read yesterday. She also was talking about how, how Ron Paul is a failure and the movement's a failure, but she didn't mention none of this either. Paul is running for the highest office of the land, and by simply acknowledging Paul's presence in the race, they can broaden the debate that takes place. They can broaden the discourse. Instead, they choose to use infidel logic and language in covering the candidates. What is the logic? Ron Paul different, so Ron Paul scary. Uh, But they did not overlook Paul when there is a chance to say that he delivers speeches that are at an 8th grade level. They go so far as to imply he is sophomoric. And lead this, and led the story with a photo of Paul speaking to his son, uh, Senator Rand Paul. This message is a hard one to miss. Ron Paul is stupid. 
Is this how hard it has become to attack Paul's ideas? That the Federal Reserve Bank must be audited? Our foreign policy strategy must be rebuilt on more solid foundation? And a congressman's oath, the Constitution, should be taken more seriously? Is the only way to attack him to descend to a grade school tactic of calling him a superior adv advisory stupid? This is what we're getting on. It's amazing. What is it? Uh, curiously, the thrust... Hold on. Let's see. Mascaro, in an article written at a freshman year of high school grade level, does not mention or list any link or any metric of how she evaluated these grade levels. Following the same methods, one could just say Mascaro writes at the second grade level, much worse than the literal sophomoric moniker she applies to members of Congress. After uh, denigrating Paul, she even goes as far to cite a quote that Paul uses in virtually every stump speech and claims that it was something that is no longer used by politicians. Quote, consider Everett Dickerson, the legendary Republican senator from Illinois who de defended a civil rights bill in 1964 by paraphrasing 19th century French writer Victor Hugo, stronger than all the armies is an idea whose time has come. But that was then. This was all quite typical of many in the media, lack of research, superficial views of topics, low level of discourse. In a childish hatchet piece, Mascaro has neglected to acknowledge the substance of Paul's imp important statements, statements that are resonating with the generation of young people, are echoing cross-generationally and are single-handedly changing the face of public discourse in America. This piece by Mascaro is typically of an, is typical of an uh, arrogant media that prides itself on being good uh, grammarians, yet who so many Americans look at ruefully for turning their profession into one virtually uh, indecipherable from that of the mindless sonographer. <laughs> I'm sorry if I can't read all these words that you put these big words up here. I don't be uh, reading. I'd be reading fast sometimes. But anyways, you know, this is what I'm talking about why we need to occupy the media. This is exactly what I mean. Because people like this need to be scared to write things like this. They need to be scared and afraid to step outside for putting out these lies and, and calling Ron Paul an eighth grader. Got the nerve. He, you know what? You don't even need to go to college to, for economics, to learn economics. Just listen to Ron Paul. And you telling me as an eighth grader, the guy that predicted the financial collapse, talks like an eighth grader, predicted the blowback with our foreign po po policy? He was able to uh, explain why the IRS is illegal, why the income tax is illegal. Are you kidding me? Why the Federal Reserve creates the bubbles that we have? This is an eighth grader? You know, it amazes me, man. It, it really does. You know, again, if we occupy the media and we occupy these media whores like Bill O'Reilly, you know, I just played yesterday on my show a clip of him running like a little schoolgirl running like he's scared, hiding in his car behind his windows because he don't want to answer no questions that people ask for him. You see, that's what I'm saying. When you put the camera on these guys, these little guys, the, l the little guys, they get scared and they run because they're cowards. They're cowards. That's what they are. They hide behind their articles. They hide behind their TV screens, behind the 1%. Got the nerve to, to say these things about Ron Paul. And this is why we have to occupy them. This is why they need to be afraid to do things like this because they're going to be embarrassed to step outside and they're going to be exposed. You guys can check this out. The, the article is at Policy Mike, but they're talking about the article at New York Times. LA, excuse me, LA Times. LATimes.com. You think Congress is sophomoric? A study says you're right. This was out on May 27th by Lisa Mascaro. Just put Lisa Mascaro, Congress, sophomore. A study says you're right. These these people, I'm telling you, man. These people need to get they need to be exposed. Just like just like the little guy that was uh, passing the fake uh, Ron Paul slates in Maine. As soon as, as soon as Ginger put the camera on him, what he do? Run into the little police officer like a little girl, <laughs> like a little you know what. Anyways, we'll be right back. I'm your host, Paco. You're listening to Occupy the Media. Hi, I'm Dana, and I started out as a Ron Paul fan just like you. And now I'm a full-time volunteer leader at our Ron Paul headquarters in Venice, California. It starts with the first thing you hear Ron Paul say that is different than all the other politicians.